them taking away three of his champions still. That Grag is getting taken out, but that left Nidalee open, and we know how terrifying and Italy can be. Those spears late game with the death cap of Void Staff and the Athenes and Holy Grail from the unlimited mana. Just so, so strong. But Shavana coming in from the side of KLH. And uh, we'll see what they can do as uh, our picks and bans still go underway. All right, so a couple of other things to notice. We actually saw this band out in our first best of three of the day. It's going to be a Nidalee locked in there for wind. And while he probably won't be playing that champion, we could see side lane split push Nidalee. Yes. Uh, split push worked relatively well in the last game, but AP Nidalee, this is 3.13, so has not received the nerfs that she did in 3.14. And while those weren't just completely detrimental to her champion, oh, incredibly yeah. strong in 3.13. So really excited to see that out there. Uh, no, uh, we saw the, the three AP carry bands coming out from KLH in game number one. They're just sticking to those three bands, and uh, it looks like Hong Kong Attitude know exactly what to pick, even without their mid lane champions being available. They're like, you know, you keep banning out Pasa, but there's other things he can play. Apparently his champion pool is pretty huge. And uh, with a coach like Toys, who was formerly from TPA, the season two world champions, he's, uh, he's kind of helping out their team, and I'm pretty sure he's given a lot of tips and tricks to Pasa, but KLH, they picked up their bot lane support combination in that Caitlyn and Annie already. So looking for heavy poke, looking for a lot of damage. But HKA responding with a Shivana pick of their own, which is most likely going to go over to Wind. And potentially, no, not potentially, it's going to be a Vi for Faye in the jungle. All right, so we're going to have to watch out for the jungle pick for KLH. But it's interesting to see KLH just saying, all right, you guys got your turn with Caitlyn, Annie. Now it's our turn. When interesting to me is going to be who they actually choose to play as their AD carry. Mm -hmm. Because while Jay Yoon used to be their AD carry for a long time, that's pretty much everything he played. Yeah. Played mid there in the last game and didn't actually have all that bad a performance, but it really wasn't about the mid lane deciding that fight. It was the jungle just running everywhere and killing everything. Yeah, after that early two for one, it kind of threw everything off ba balance and uh, just completely that lane just was not looking good for <laughs> Jae Young. But maybe looking for a repeat of performance or looking for the NASA's Jax, as Jax does get locked in. So could potentially see a more aggressive top laner for uh, Golden this time and a uh, farm heavy jungler in that Nasus for XXF unless they have a hidden jack jungle that we don't know about. And that's that's what I was expecting because with as strong as Nasus is, especially in 3.14, you just cannot let that guy up the top lane. In 3.13, before the lifesteal nerfs to Nasus, oh, yeah. all you did was run 6% lifesteal. You started the game with 1,600 gold in lifesteal, uh, minus the attack damage that you would get oh, from the band center. Too. But either way, you just have <laughs> way too much sustain up there. You can sit there forever, and especially if you run the heal summoner that Jae Yoong has now, probably it's won't not keep that that way, <laughs> but you get extra health per level if you do empower that mastery. So just saying, it's a possibility. Hey, gone, though, in 3.14. Oh, rest in peace, old yeah. masteries. Uh, I was looking through the mastery trees to find out what these players are running. I'm like, wait, I can't use those masteries anymore. So uh, the sad days are gone, but now you can buy lots of Targon's braces. So <laughs> Relic shield first. All right. So <laughs> nice to see the evolution of, uh, of League of Legends. But taking a little bit of a step back to 3-1-3, it's going to be the last picks locked in for a Hong Kong attitude. And it's going to be the Lucian. We saw game number one, and mm -hmm. it's going to be the wife steal lane coming out 100%. again. There you go. It's Lucian Thresh. A lot of lore coming out of there, but it's going to be interesting to see how they go up against, against the lane that they ran in the last game in Kaylin Annie. Yeah, and uh, I guess they have a response for it. They know how to uh, counteract that one. Maybe 2v1 could happen. Maybe a little bit of lane swap I don't know coming about in. That. It could be possible. We never uh, counted that's out. True. That's true. But uh, maybe I'm just thinking too far true. ahead. <laughs> they still need a mid laner potentially for the side of uh, KLH. And uh, they're hovering over the Tristana. That might be Jay Yoon's most uh, pr prominent champion in the mid lane there, that Tristana, which. He didn't have too much of an effect that last game with, and going up against Pasa's Nidalee, Oof. that's going to be a little rough. All right, locked in once again. Now, keep in mind, you could switch that up and have a Kaelin mid. I've seen it before. Probably uh, not, especially against so. the Nidalee. Yeah. I mean, traps on traps is one thing, but yeah, like we said, Jae Young didn't actually do all that badly, but running an AD Tristana mid is not something I've seen from any other servers. So I'll have to see if Jae Young can have a little bit of a better performance against Pasa's Nidalee if uh. you let that Nidalee get going. If you don't put the pressure on, it's great to farm to a late game Tristana, but late game Nidalees are just as terrifying. Uh, 
late game Italy has always been the bane of solo queues existence, as well as a lot of challenger tier and professional games, as we have plenty, plenty of good Nidalee players in NA, mm -hmm. when Bishu, and we've seen a ton of people play it. But we're going to get loaded in as everything ticks away, and uh, we're going to be getting underway with game two at IAM Singapore with uh, Hong Kong Attitude taking on Kuala Lumpur Hunters. All right, so loading in, uh, something to watch out for. We talked about the jungle pressure being incredibly important. This time around, it's going to be a Vi taking on a Nasus. And if Meteos showed us anything from the last split of LCS, it is that Nasus can come back from just about anything in yes. the jungle. <laughs> yes, he can, and become that scary dog that everybody fears. But coming up to Vi, he has a lot to fight for in the early game. He has to make it out of the jungle to get to late game. So we'll see if Faye wants to let him do that. But it's heal on Jay Ewing in the mid lane on that Tristana, which is something I'm interested about. And uh, we're loaded in and getting underway as uh, everybody's going to look to leave the base very soon. And uh, we're going to see if anybody postures aggressively. All right, and that is why you don't count anything out. We talked about the heal summoner early. I was kind of making fun of it, but it gets locked in. And Jay Yoon. Just to spite you. <laughs> he's listening from across our massive auditorium here at IEM. Somehow, it's like uh, Jane Eyre going in there. He manages to hear me, and there is the heal summoner on Jay Yoon. I don't believe he actually empowered that with the defensive tree, so it's just going to be used there as kind of a, oh, you thought you were going to snipe me? Just kidding. I can heal myself. Hmm. I'm, I'm not sure how you... Usually you want to be somebody that's in the middle of your team so yep. you can heal up the most people uh, with the summoner spell. But mm -hmm. I don't know. We'll have to see uh, what Jay Yoon hopes to do with that. Both teams setting up for the level one. And so welcome to the game. If you're just now joining <laughs> us, it's a one game advantage for Hong Kong Attitude after just a, a slow but dominant Ooh. game number one. Spear. <laughs> no, that was not lag. They were actually just standing still right in front of each other, testing patience. And then a spear came out and he dodged it. But we see aggressive wards. Oh my god, the spear actually connected. So one for one so far. I don't think I'll be able to keep track this whole game, but I'm going to try to. Uh, spear number three. Uh, Here it comes. Fossa. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Completely juking himself out there, but he goes back into his position and they're having a little fun. But already early wards coming in from the side of HK. They have one in the upper tri brush. They have one at the entrance to the dragon in that little brush there. And then they have one at the blue. So potentially could see some early uh, counter. Oh, but Spear's going to stop Jae Yoon's back. Yeah, Jae Yoon stopped from backing right there means that he actually mm. shouldn't continue to back. It's oh. going to be stopped even further. Hasn't really accomplished a lot of things. And starting out your lane at half health, that's why you don't sit there in the mid lane and play that sort of poke game early on. He's running 4% lifesteal, so he can sustain some of that back up. Poss is low on mana. He's got Doran's Ring, but uh, I think he'll be able to stand up and be fine in this lane. But we do see a blue buff start for the side of XXF and a red buff start for the side of Faye, but up top it's going to be Wind in a 2v1 already initiated by the side of KLH as Red Hot Rays leads that charge with Waslands. And XSF going to get this one out with a smite and an auto attack and hit level 2 off that little golem and go to red. All right, so Nasus is actually forced to use Smite early on. Means that if Vi wants to walk straight to his red buff, that's a pretty easy attempt at stealing that away. It's going to go for a little bit of a safer start. Both junglers starting on the bottom half of the map and then moving top side means that they could look for that early uh, 3v1 dive. Mm -hmm. But with HK's fail there in the, uh, in the area, could be uh, enough to keep wins safe for now. Now, game number one, we saw a very, uh, a very push heavy, a very sustain heavy side lane performance. Didn't really get to see how these solo laners fared in 1v2s. So we'll get that opportunity here. Game number two continues. No 3v1s being set up, just straight up farming through the jungle for both teams. Yeah, and I like what Red Hat Rays did up top there. He dropped the ward at the uh, entrance of their uh, tower, just out of range. He's able to spot out uh, Wind there and potentially a gank if they were going to get ganked early. So a lot of safe play coming here from them. Pasa getting forced out a little bit. The AD heavy uh, damage coming here from Jay Yoon as well as the Explosive Shock going to mitigate some of that healing and do a ton of damage to him. So we're going to force him out early, but late game is where Nidalee starts to shine. Uh, so does Tristana, though. So I want to see how they both scale and play it out. But uh, just respectively, the 2v1s, they're just farming it up and keeping it equal. And it's just up to see it's up to seeing how the uh, solo laners can deal with it. All right, so as far as solo laners go, you won't see too many solo laners until maybe five, six minutes if you do want to go for that very fast early turret push. But it doesn't look like either team are really calling their junglers to help out the lanes. Junglers just <laughs> living up to their names, sticking into the jungle. Could look to see gank attempt Fi. Uh -huh. 
Coming in from the back. No, back's on off for now. No, he's now still like, there. He's, right. he's sitting there. This potentially right. could be really good. And also, Vault Breaker can interrupt Rocket Jump uh, in the middle of the animation, so we could actually see that come out. But nope, jumps over it and uh, completely just uh, makes my statement false there. But <laughs> it'll be a nice little safe uh, Jay Ewing in the mid lane. So both side laners really getting denied off of CS. You can see uh, 7 to 4 CS, nothing really happening there. Mid lane Spear does land to start trading that damage away. The problem with this mid lane is that there's so much sustain for Pasa once he starts to get on towards his uh, Athenes on Holy Grail, Ooh. even just Chalice of Harmony. Be a Wind? lot left there, but win. Holy cow. Oh, Golden is actually going in down bot. Gets the stun onto perhaps the Wither gets dropped out there. There is the Spirit Fire. Going to be a siphoning strike to hit him just a little bit slow with the red buff as well. But they're not going to be able to get much out of this just yet. No flash was burned, no exhaust. Everything's still up for the side of HKA. They did uh, force Golden to jump out there, but he still has all of his summoners, and uh, that could have potentially been very dangerous. But up top, we do have Finn holding off to this turret while Wind was forced to go back after a really good trade from KLH. As he does use the ballpark to clear out some of that way, we do see XXF come back in here. There's going to be a stun and a flay as now they're initiating and the first blood goes over to KLH in a really good performance right there. They withered. They got the uh, oh, stun XXF coming in from staying. Golden. Oh, man. Is Engon going to get chopped out here? It's going to be an auto attack in the wither oh, through the dash. The flash forward comes in from Golden, forcing out Engon's flash. He'll be forced to go back. And now with only Barrier as a summoner, that's going to be really risky if XXF wants to come back down again. Oh, Engon reacted, uh, I, I guess, uh, reactionarily, he was like, okay, I'm getting jumped on, better flash away, or better uh, use that Relentless Pursuit. But Relentless Pursuit uh, removes all slows from your champion, so if he had actually waited to receive the Wither, he could have just cleansed that away, dashed away, wouldn't have had to flash there. So Summoner burned nonetheless. So great job there by XXF, who having a much different start to his game here yes. in game number two. Hmm. The Kindle Gem before his uh, Spirit Stone down there. Oh, but up top, actually, Red Hot Ray is going to get chunked out there. Ton of damage coming in from the Excessive Force as well as the Vault Breaker. And we do see them forcing him back. And uh, just going to go back to CSing and keeping his AD carry safe. And Waslin's in the mid lane, though. Ju has a big wave building up. He's harassing down with that Explosive Shot, preventing some of that healing and uh, taking a little bit of a CS lead. And God, though, falling behind his counterpart in that 2v1 in Waslin's. As uh, we do have Faye sitting up there for quite a while and keeping Wind with a little bit of a, a zone and helping him farm up. I feel like this game, the mid lane is going to be what the side lane was in game number one. <laughs> Just AFK farming things out there. Yeah. I'd both teams really confident that their mid laner is going to do better with a, just a ton of free farm. And you can kind of see where both of them are coming from. Mm -hmm. six, six item Tristana, I don't know any six item champion in the entire game that's scarier than that. Uh, I don't know, maybe six item Cassidy. Jax, maybe, but Jax is really much uh, more of just a, hey, I'm going to jump in there, great 1v1 duelist. <laughs> Big presence in a team fight, but still, Tristana, a lot of late game potential. Ooh. Death sentence. Connects in. There's going to be a stun coming in. It does connect through End God's Relentless Pursuit. We're going to see him piercing light. Not be able to follow up with that Gunslinger pass. We do have a Vault Breaker charging. Hits a trap, though, forces the flash on a Red Hot <laughs> Raise. He's level 6, has the Assault and Battery with that flash down on Red Hot Raise. I think he's going to loop back around and try to make a kill attempt up in this top lane, especially if you win, being very close to 6. That Dragon's Ascent can be available. But it looks like the first tier one turn of the game is going to go over to HKA as uh, they're going to be pushing really hard with that Lucian Thresh lane. And they're going to get that taken care of in the mid lane. Once again, just continually farming things out there. Oh, Pasa. Oh. Pasa's oh, waiting. The blind spear, oh. he gets it through the smite. And Pasa stealing away XXF's blue buff. A beautiful spear and beautiful ward placement. And that is why Nilly is very annoying. <laughs> yeah, for, uh, for the mid lane there on HK, nothing truly impossible. Taking that buff away and then probably will be able to take. Oh, yeah, he gets to the cannon creep. That's, that's the big moral victory on top of that. It's like, I can take your blue buff and my own cannon creep in time makes it home in time for that one. Top lane, it's been more fight top laning this game than doing a lot of jungling. And credit to, H to, uh, to KLH for keeping him out of that jungle where he had such a huge presence in game number one, forcing him to be more of a side laner and really disallowing him from Ooh. having a big carry effect. Down bot, we see a little bit of a training coming out. Golden is winning out a little bit. Double door is doing a ton of damage. We see Wind going a little bit more for a tankier route. He's got the Ruby Crystal and the lock on the uh, cloth armor. So potentially could looking could be looking to build the Aegis for the team. Not sure just yet with that build, but could go a ton of routes. So we'll see as the late game progresses. But a sneaky dragon from the side of XXF on that level six Nasus pops the Fury of the Sands. And we are seeing Nidalee walk over again. Can Pasa steal a dragon? Oh no. No, he cannot. Siphoning strike <laughs> and smite. 
get him that one. Well, now Wind is going to get stunned out by that uh, Jax. Oh and they're chasing my. it down with the Wither. Going to force the Dragon to descent. And he's going to be able to fly on out of there. But possibly going to get jumped on. Drops Ignite. Turns into that Cougar form. Hits the Claws. You're going to be a Flash of Salt and Battery on a Golden. Can he get out of there? Gets Ignited in the Claws. Pick up the kill for Pasa in that Cougar form. They lose Dragon, but they pick up one kill. But still, KLH have that minor gold advantage. You can tell there's... KLH weren't on the same page. Uh, Golden's just like, all right, I got this. We're going for it. After the Dragon's Descent, I kind of feel like, you know, hey, you burned the ultimate. It's great. It's time to leave. Yeah. But uh, Golden went a little bit too far, wound up getting taken out for it. And that gives the first kill Ooh. for HKA Death Sentence. <laughs> Not going to land just yet, but God getting a nice trade off of that. Yeah. <laughs> he tries to go for the backwards play. They're trying to uh, pull in Red Hop raise into a bat position, but can't get it, but still just attempting, and Red Hot Ray's level 6 now, Tibber's available, a ton of burst damage could come out, even uh, perhaps is not level 6 just yet, auto attack harass coming in from their phenomenal range. Across the map though, Golden trying to freeze out this bot lane just a little bit, gonna get most of that, and uh, Destin is blindly not gonna connect up there, but we do have XXF, oh, whoa, alright, a uh, uh, little bit of a mm, mishap Tibber's there, but he'll be able to help push the wave at least. That feel when you don't have a teddy bear to go with you to the prom, but really just need one. Red Hot Ray is just uh, wanted some extra company there in the top lane. Misses the stun. That means that Engad doesn't have to worry about the stun, the initial damage, but the immolation That's a lot of aura. damage coming in right there. And now a flay out of two members. Box comes in. Wildslings is not going to move towards it. A stun goes in onto Engad. Ignited. Auto attacks coming in like crazy. The culling comes out, kills the Timbers, but the ace of the hole oh, forces the flash out, perhaps. And here comes Faye. Can he get anything with this one, though? It looks like he stops. Can not get the assault battery as it's not up, oh, it's but seconds. he does stop the aggression. They're very low in the stop lane. They need to go back. They're going for I, the dive. I, they're, are they going to go for the dive? The assault battery is up right now. Just came up in this last second. Can they get the kill? Red Hot Rays. Flash is not available. He's going to just go in with this one right now. Destin does not connect, but HK and God picks it up, and now Waz is going to be their target as Faye picks it up. That's going to be a two for none, and a tier one turn in the top lane to make it the second turn of the game for HKA. Yeah, you just can't stay there. We talked about the seconds left on that cooldown. They could have just straight up turned oh, that tier fight around. Here comes XXF and Jay Yoon right now. The Wither gets not dropped just yet. He's going to drop the Spirit Fire. Flash forward at the perhaps. There's going to be a reset of the rocket jump for Jay Yoon, but they're going to be content with just getting one kill and uh, avenge that poor Annie and Caitlyn. All right, so I love what KLH just did there. They had the opportunity to repeat their mistake that they made in the bottom lane, and after picking up one kill, go too hard for the second one. But instead of doing that, did just decide, hey, we're just going to take one, back off. So it is still a favorable two-for-one exchange for Hong Kong Attitude. Yeah. They can still, KLH still able to counter out their plays, come back and make a few of their own. Yeah, and now trying to make a play up top here. Jay Yoon is going to rotate up with the help of XXF. We're going to see them push this wave up very hard. Faye, not with too much wave clear potential. A lot of damage being laid in here. Siphoning Strike is going to hit him in the face. The Wither is slowing him down as well. Jay Yoon pops that Rapid Fire and will take down this tier one turret and grab KLH's first turret of the game in the top lane. Rapid Fire, probably my favorite move in the game. It's always nice. To, uh, to have a little bit of a shout out to myself <laughs> and also Jay Yu. You got to give this guy oh, some credit. Oh, in the credit. mid lane. Actually, they're jumping out to HK win right now, but they stop. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> it looked like it was fun. <laughs> somewhat anti climactic oh. there. It's like everybody <laughs> running at each other and nobody really accomplishing a whole lot. KLH stuck at their mid lane turret. And uh, yeah, what I was going to say, Jay Yu, mid lane Tristana, he's running heal. I I, have, I don't know why, but it's working out. He has 1 0 0. Hasn't used a, it yet. Yeah, I mean, he's 102 CS, highest CS in the game by just. One or two, bit. so uh, it's, it's nice to see the mid lane Trist working out. Not something that I'm too familiar with, but I'll have to see if it can make it to that late game. That's really why you put sort of a, a big farm champion mid. Just like, hey, I can just wave clear the, the lane, back off to the turret, and mm -hmm. just have a little bit of an easy out. Whoa, wind going down to Wazlis right now. There's Faye, assault and battery. Going to look to take out the other cop there as the 90 caliber net is not enough to stop the Vault Breaker Ooh. as... That'll be a kill to Faye, but in the mid lane, perhaps is getting jumped on by Jay Yoon. He's gonna use the Dark Passage for his shield. Pasta's coming in. It's gonna be the Buster shot, and the Destin is still connecting after his death. But the rocket jump oh, comes in. The flash block. pounce comes in. The minion block gonna help Pasta pick up the kill. Jay Yoon goes down to Pasta, and that is gonna be potentially a uh, blue buff. <laughs> Trying to be stolen out there by a spear, but XSF was one step ahead this time. But the tier one in the mid lane looking to be the last outer to go down here as HK want to go in. But KLF, KLH is looking to respond to this one. There's a stun coming out of the end god exhaust. Not the exhaust, but the ignite goes down. And that is going to be a dead end god as the fear of the storms and the wither and everything coming in. The tibbers as well. And they will pick up one kill and keep the turret alive and now look to counter push in this mid lane. 
All right, don't think we're going to see a dive just yet, but man, <laughs> if the first tippers didn't really work out for KLH, that one just completely affected. Oh, Red yeah. Hot Rays got in there, stunned them out, and were able to pick up a kill there on 2 end gods. So if we want to take a look at what's stacking up, what's strong for both teams, you'll actually notice a uh, Morella Nomicon hmm. picked up for Pasa. That's a very early game item. You don't get a lot of benefit from the uh, the gold for 10. Uh, you don't get a lot of stacking up from the tier, which he has as well. So he's going for a lot of Ooh, early Oh, connects, actually. He's going to go in. He's going to flay him backwards with the rocket jump. Oh he did my it. God. The bounce comes in the heal as well. And it's going to be the bite coming in from that Cougar form. Pasa picks up the kill. A spear to XXF. The turret is almost dead. They're going to focus this one down after a really, really well played flight. There's going to be another one to XXF, but Red Hot Ray shows his face, and they will back off Spears to clear out some of the minions, trying to hit onto that Annie, but cannot get it in time. And more Spears going to come out. That blue buff and tier still stacking up. That was a beautiful play oh my from goodness. HKAs, perhaps. I don't think they had realized that Frost gets here tomorrow. Like, Mad Life's <laughs> not in the building just yet, but oh, you get a little bit of a preview. Oh, but here comes Jax. It's a double stun onto Pasa. Can they chase someone down? Ace in the hole in the face. The calling. The, calling, the death sentence as well to pull them backwards. XSF gets poked out. There's the assault and battery coming in as well as Engot picking up the kill. He gets a blue bomb on this one. The flay onto Gold is just trying to jump in and do something. He's exhausted. Oh my god, perhaps. The gunslinger passive helping pick up the kill to Jax. And now Engot gonna dash forward, but there's a dragon in the back. Can they tame it? It looks like no. Engot gonna pick up a quadra kill as now Jayun comes in from the back and cannot do anything. There's gonna be a tier two being pressured and possibly going down unless Jayun can get a kill out of this one. He's gonna look for the death sentence from perhaps but cannot get it. The turret is gonna be held here as Jayun does spawn in time, but a quadra kill for N God. <laughs> N God definitely living up to his name. That guy is ridiculous. Four kills in that just one team fight. And I like to point out his itemization, not going for the Bloodthirster build, just hitting up the Trinity Force. Hmm. And hey, it's good enough for four kills in that exchange. Hong Kong attitude, a little bit of a nice engagement to start the fight off for KLH, but HKA fires back. Yeah, and he's got 1,600 gold. We see their team actually going for Dragon right now. Faye has the smite available. He's just gonna be able to grab that one and snag it really easily. So capitalizing on everything from the side of HKA. They've gotten two dragons so far. They're showing a lot of dominance, and oh my god, that spear just chunked you. And he doesn't, uh, there's no death cap. There's no needlessly large rod on Pas Pasa. It's just that Morella Nomicon and uh, a nice level advantage there as well. He'll be able to see us relatively easily at the turret and clear that wave off for now. But if, if you're KLH, you're, you're like, okay, well, we, we had lost a team fight. We need to make something happen now. What, what do they look to do? They're putting some pressure mid. They do have enough wave clear to keep that lane pushing, especially with Golden's side lane. Even if mid lane doesn't work out, bottom turret should be a nice target for Golden to try to take down. Yeah. And uh, we could look to see them push this one out. They're still down by about 4.2k gold. They're trying to keep up. They're trying to stop the uh, relentless pressure coming from HK, perhaps showing Madlife-esque uh, moves there on that Thresh and just showing us a great performance. We're going to see as Rebuff gets passed over to Jay Yoon here. His heal's almost up for the next fight. He's got Flash available. We could potentially see some uh, some Insect Tristana play, some tri Trisec? Tristek? Tristek? Uh, I don't know. Ju pulled it out <laughs> in game number one. Does he still have it in him? Spear lands, but the life steal is just giving him enough Ooh. to stay in lane. Oh, the red, field goal right there. Red Hot Ray is there, and that guy is definitely on a diet. Ooh. There's right. the spear to land. And that's the great thing about Nidalee's spear. Oh my god, I'm piercing light. I'm just, okay, you Can can't, you get this one? You can't stand anywhere near the turret. Another spear, half health uh, XXF. He's going to have to go back to base, and the push continues. So much poke from sources you wouldn't necessarily oh, expect to see Oh, there's a dive in the bot lane right now, actually, as Wind comes behind Dragon, the second connects on the goal as he gets ignited. A ton of damage, the Ardent Blaze as well for an assist. And with that dive, wow, Wind actually gets out of there after taking a ton of turret shots. HKA grab their fifth turret of the game, that tier two in the bot lane, looking to pressure down onto an inhibitor turret, while Pasa makes his home in that side of the wall, <laughs> throwing spears like he was in the oh Olympics. <laughs> as now, the inhibitor turret is going to be their target. The Tippers does come out and gets death sentence. Doesn't really stop too much. Faye gets ignited and dropped out there. Oh my god, Arden Blaze comes in. The calling coming in. Can it pick up the kill through the that fear of the sands. It looks like no. Another Loslins eats another one to the face. That is going to be a dead inhibitor turret and possibly inhibitor with how much KLH needs to heal. Oh my goodness. Yeah, they just can't stay at that turret. Oh. Death sentence misses. 
Okay. And got Spear misses as well. He's gonna get the Blade of the Rune King, perhaps. Gonna get initiated on here. Two stuns, everything. Jay Yoon picks up the kill. The box is gonna slow him down for a little bit, but can they catch up? There's a flash and a wither available to XXF. The Relentless Pursuit was just used right there. And God gonna get jumped in on. He's forced to flash away. He has Red Buff for a little bit of kite. There's a Vault Breaker onto the Blue Buff. Va Faye is gonna get chased down. Can they do anything else? Spears now for the disengage. Flash Wither gets actually dropped in there on the Posse. He's forced to flash away. Vault Breaker. Assault and Battery actually the Golden right now. He flashes away from that one. Can they pick up anything from here? It looks like Faye will pick up one going on the killing spree, but pass off that oh goal to Caitlyn. The damage from N God is too much right now. Red buff and kiting away from XXF. Siphoning strike. Gonna do a ton of damage. Oh he turns God. his attention to the Annie. Picks up the kill. Can he get XXF here? Is the question. The spirit fire from XXF picks up the kill, and he will make that into a three for three. While Wind, being gentle, gentle and silent, just pushing up in top. I don't know if there's uh, that's whipping up like a typhoon or a uh, a storm of, of some small particles that can be melted <laughs> down into glass, uh, something along those lines. But it's definitely picking up. Is now Wind just straight up tanking that top lane turret, takes it out. Uh, when you have a champion versus turret matchup, I feel like the turret should usually win that, and uh, it just goes to show Wind just incredibly strong at this point in time. And speaking of incredible strength, you got, uh, we have some increasingly interesting itemization Medias. there in the mid lane. Uh, Saras Embrace was completed in 19 minutes. A very fast Saras at that much, at that end. Now, Medjai's Soul Stealer, so he's really confident that he's gonna pick up assists and kills with those spears. <laughs> All right, so it doesn't get much more confident than picking up a stacking item. Even has an elixir of brilliance there. Huh. Whether or not that Medjai's choice was brilliant, we'll get a chance to see. Max range spear on Baron Nasher. Doesn't actually, accurate. yeah, he huh. doesn't even <laughs> take damage if you're not in range, so That's okay. it's somewhat unfortunate. But he's gonna be pretty happy about that. His counterpart in Dragon will be back up in a minute and a half. But yeah, it's going to be all about Baron, all about pushing up that top lane. Oh, Jay Yoong, oh. Jay Yoong, please. Spear, Spear come out. Oh. Oh. All right. Well, <laughs> with that, we also didn't notice that perhaps had five pink wards in his inventory, taking complete control of the red side of the jungle. We do have red. Oh, man. Red Hot almost getting tagged out there by that Destinus. They're going to exchange wards and glances. And uh, he's going to look to clear out that green ward. And now Baron control in the complete control of HKA. So for now, yeah, Kuala Lumpur Hunters, they are forced way back to their base. And it's not just Baron that they have to worry about. Keep in mind, it's capable of being like two or three manned yeah. right now by HK. They have to worry about wind in the bottom lane. This guy has completed his uh, magic resistance from Mercury Treads. He's got the Sunfire Cape going on. So much split pushing capability that it's going to require Golden to split against him. The only problem is that while Jax is great at split pushing 1v1 dueling, when he can just walk huh. away. Cutlass and turning around, gonna hit with the Twit Fangs. Auto attacks from Annie trying to help out. Gonna get that breath through them, and it looks like he's gonna keep the pressure there. But a nice split push coming in. It's gonna be a 3 1 1. Actually, never mind. Lucian's joining the fray up top, so it's gonna be a 4 0 1 coming in as they leave Wind alone. Descendants comes through the wall, not gonna connect, and it looks like the spear connects on oh the my red hot. Oh, not enjoying that one. Arden Blaze as well. That is gonna force him all the way back, while Golden and Wind go at it in the bot lane, just trading a ton of damage. Play the Rune King comes in. Drag is the set as well. He's gonna be forced to run away here. Gets the breath. The ignites are ticking. It looks like oh. they're gonna trade it very close with that one, but Golden has the home field advantage and will be able to sustain staying back up, but still, this tier three in the bot lane oh getting pumped God. out. That spear doing a ton of damage to Waslins, not having a good time. And this is a mid to late game in Italy that you do not want to see. Spear come out, Jay Yoong, the AD carry that doesn't get hit by those. Disengage, From Hong Kong attitude. They are not going to overstay their welcome. They realize that they don't have any pressure in the bottom lane. So 4v5s, no matter how far you, you are ahead, probably not fights you want to start. No, but it looks like they're going to steal away the red buff, give that one over to Engod, and see if he can stay the uh, miraculous AD carry that he has been with the Quantra kill under his belt. But now triple traps out there. Those Yordle snap traps are going to prove to be a little bit of a problem, but not for perhaps, as he will eat one to the face, take a wither, and right back on out. Oh, but God. those spears still just chunking away at the members of KLH. and. There's not much they can do against them right now. Traps come in, they're just gonna eat those. It's gonna be a Dark Passion to shield with the damage. Faye will eat the other two, and now End God gets a free little bit of auto attacks to that. Takes his Relentless of Pursuit out of there and eats an uh, Explosive Shock, gonna take a little bit of damage. But it's gonna be Dragon Soul it out by Wind, taking out one of his own kind, which is very sad. But 
Now, it's going to be initiation up top here, coming in from Golden Force, and the flash on two man tippers comes in. Spirit Fire as well, and that's going to be Thresh going down as Jay Yung is still alive in the back line. Faye is going to flash up. Oh, with a spear. Golden! Picks up the kill on Golden. It's going to be as well an Annie falling to N God, but Jay Yung jumping in, trying to chase down N God. 90 caliber net comes in, flash forward from Jay Yung, but the heal from Nidalee healing for about 600 HP. Uh. Going to keep him safe, but Pasa now on the chase. A win down bot. Going to be able to push down. Ignite gets dropped on XXF. Can they do anything else? The spears are aren't landing right now. Pasa is going to heal himself up for a ton. And the push is going to continue while Wind looking to grab a free inhibitor down bot as they're sending XXF over, but he cannot duel him right now. And even with the Wither, Twin, the Bite is going to come in as well as the Dragon's Descent, and that inhibitor is going to fall unless XXF can do something with this one right, right now. The Tier 1 does fall to minions, so giving a little bit of gold over to KLH. But actually, Wind going to be held off here? Oh no! My the bite comes in, but it gives enough time for Golden to flash forward with the stun. The Blade of the Root King coming in as well as a ton of auto attack. There is one more leap and an empowered auto attack to come in from Golden to pick up the kill and stop that split push, and that is the inhibitor that could. That held on for a long time. If you guys are new to watching uh, tournaments uh, that, I, that I cast, like either ALCS, NACL, you are familiar with Steve, the one Nexus turret that can. I'm not sure if Steve has a brother and an inhibitor, but man, that guy held on for a long time. It was nice to see sort of the tag team there between XXF and Golden, because I was almost sure that XXF would have been able, either able to just trade or would have lost that trade, but it's Golden coming into the back. XXF knew exactly how long he had to stay alive, traded that kill out and kept the inhibitor alive. So. Death's still coming out there for KLH. We'll have to stop that if they want to turn this around, but inhibitors stay up. And keep in mind, this is 3.13, so all lanes will be affected once an inhibitor goes down, so a much bigger factor to uh, keep in mind. Yep, and still, we're not seeing a five-man group come in from uh, HK, eh? as they want to uh, keep the split pressure from wind. They're sending him back down, but Waslin is going to help clear out most of this mid lane. The blue buff's going to go get passed over to XXF, as no one else can really use it as efficiently. Spirit fires all over the place. Withers on a nice little short cooldown for him. And uh, Golden going back to base now. Still hasn't gotten the Trinity Force just yet. Still sitting on that phage. Sells the flask. And uh, blue buff over to Pasa as he goes for a Warden's Mail on his jack. So looking for a little bit more tankiness and some armor to deal with N God and Wind and Fey. But we are seeing KLH group up by the top turret. They know the plan that uh, HKA has. They want to split push and get this inhibitor turret down. Now, Wind does, is down there in the bottom lane, something we haven't talked about almost over the course of this entire game. XXF huh. is up to 320 stacks, so Wither Ooh. on to fight. We'll be able to get... Ardent Blaze comes in. Jay Yung oh, jumps Jay in! A song battery turning it around. The heal keeps him around for a little bit, but N God says, no, you are going to die. Flay out of two members. Box comes in. Wazlin's going to be N God's target. He's going to be forced to flash and barrier away. Flash Spear comes in as <laughs> this flickers all over the place. Damage and... Stuff happening everywhere. The culling onto Red Hot raises. He's going to be dove, and it's going to be a kill over to Faye, as well as Golden going to be forced to jump away from Wind. He's going to farm the wave, but the inhibitor in the top lane is going to fall. And with 30 seconds on the respawn timer, 25s currently, this could potentially be game or possibly two Nexus turrets at least. Golden's going to have to recall back to base. No home guard boots, no even second tier boots, so he's going to have to sit in Fountain or come in to face a 4v1 with half HP. Last Nexus turret will fall. The Nexus under fire. Golden gonna go in there, jumps in, gets taken oh. down very low. Can he find a kill? No, he cannot. Wind is gonna find the kill there. As the Destiny still connected to a minion, Jay Yung's gonna be the target, but Engod not giving up the pressure onto the Nexus turret. It will fall, and HKA gonna 2 0. Koala Lumbar, Lumbar Hunters. I, I don't know, maybe they need to find some koalas to hug. You know, they're very soft and cuddly and very reassuring because that was just absolutely brutal. HKA Hong Kong attitude taking it with a vengeance. 2-0 against KLH. That was a very dominating performance from HKA. This this is a team that is on pro level. We they we said before, they've taken down Singapore Sentinels in games. They've taken down Taipei Snipers, I think it was, or Assassins, I forgot what it was, but one of those Taipei teams they've taken out and now taking out KLH and showing a very strong performance. We're going to actually have a nice little uh, rematch against uh, Cyber, uh, Cyber Games Arena Legends. Yeah, I was going to say, Cyber Games Arena actually came out and I believe they actually lost their own tournament, the Cyber Games Arena 2013 Hong Kong tournament. Uh, to KLH, so they're gonna in, in their one-to-one -one score kind of tied right now as far as tournaments one They will have to go up against cyber games arena legends 
uh, as, uh, as they look to, I guess, decide who once and for all is the better team. <laughs> Coming up in the Grand Finals, which I believe we'll be casting tomorrow, I think. I think so. That's on the schedule, I'm pretty sure. But uh, nice 2-0, though, either way. And uh, I'm excited for the next set for Grand Finals, as it's going to be Hong Kong Attitude taking on Cyber Games Arena Legend. Yeah, we saw a great <laughs> comeback from Cyber Games Arena Legends. Uh, in our first best of three, second best of three. Not, no comebacks there as Hong Kong Attitude just absolutely crushed the hopes and dreams and eternal memories of Kuala Lumpur Hunters. They're going to go back. And uh, I, I mean, it's, it's cool to come out here and uh, it's I Am Singapore. You get to play on a huge stage, a lot of experience that you can draw from this yes. opportunity. Hong Kong Attitude, they're going to be drawing a little bit more experience as they return in the Grand Finals to face off against their somewhat nemeses <laughs> in Cyber Arena Legends. I'm wondering if Cyber has uh, anything up their sleeve for HKA. Well, they pulled out the no AD carry team <laughs> composition. We've seen that happen a lot in NA, though, from Curse Academy. They've they've done the double bruiser Trindamir Jax, okay? Yeah, I'm it pretty sure Curse Academy were shedding a single tear during that game. <laughs> They're like, Oriana AD carry. <laughs> I don't know about that one, but it didn't work. They were able to bring it back, come back, uh, to come back from that one game deficit and take out uh, as, uh, Detonation Focus Me. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was a nice comeback in the first best of three, second best of three, just a 2 0 domination there uh, by, uh, by, uh, of KLH by uh, their opponents. And when you, when you keep in mind, you're looking at Hong Kong Attitude, a, a team that maybe a lot of people haven't necessarily heard of. If you guys are diehard fans of the GPL, then you know all about what KLH are capable of. They've beaten the very best of that entire league, uh, whether it's Singapore Sentinels or Taipei Snipers, both of whom are playing in the pro tournament, both of whom have had losses at the hands of Hong Kong Attitude. So a great team coming up here into the grand finals of the amateur tournament. We'll have that coming up later on. But keep in mind... I am. It's not over. It's not just today. We have the Pro League of Legends tournament coming up. It's going to feature the likes of Mad Life coming over in uh, CJ Entis Frost, Frost from Korea. You also have the Chinese powerhouses in uh, IG Invictus coming in Gaming. as well. So uh, a lot of other high quality Southeast Asian League of Legends content to round out the roster. And you've got the makings for three more amazing days.